Hello and welcome to another episode of Moose's Gear Goo Review. I'm Moose, and today we got a knife review. And it's a Kershaw. Kershaw. It's the Kershaw Flock. Flock, flock, flock. Which is kind of a weird name, especially since it's just one knife, but whatever. Uh, so the Kershaw Flock. Uh, here's some details about it. The overall length is 6.875 inches. The blade length is 2.875 inches. The blade width, that can't be right. Looks like there's some typos on uh, Blade HQ for giving me this information. Uh, but the blade, oh, the blade width, okay, that makes sense. So from here to here, from uh, cutting edge to the spine, is 1.125 inches. And the blade thickness is 0.11 inches thick. Uh, handle length is four point or four inches flat, and the handle thickness is one inch thick, or 0. 0.6 inches thick. And once again, the handle width. I don't know why they're throwing in this width. I get a lot of my uh, uh, specs on these knives from Blade HQ because they do some of the best, um, you know, info as far as specs. And I'll leave a link down below to Blade HQ. Give, uh, you know, if you're not into if you're just getting in the knife community you got to check out blade hq um so yeah there's that and then uh the overall weight is 3.82 ounces okay so uh looking at this this knife it you know it seemed pretty cool when i looked online um i did get initial uh some misinformation but the price more or less matches the materials uh at the time of this video, the knife is going for around uh, $25, uh, which, you know, is kind of standard for Kershaw's budget line. Um, looking at the blade, uh, the blade shape is, is pretty sweet. It has, like, this very kind of tapered drop point, almost like leaf shape. Uh, I don't even know. It has, you know, it comes to a really fine point. kind of reminds me of the Camber, Kershaw Camber knife, uh, as far as the blade shape. Um, but, you know, it's very utilitarian. Got a small flat there, and then it uh, rounds up with some belly. Um, we do have, like, a decorative swedge on the top of the spine here. And, uh, yeah, it seems to be just kind of like a black powder-coated paint uh, on the blade. It's You got the Kershaw logo, Speed Safe. And then on the other side, you have... Um, you know, the KIA patent, whatever, 1330 might be the model. And then, yeah, the 1330 is the model. And then it just says China. So you have no steel markings either. And at one point I saw info that it might be like 14 or 12C, or no, 14C28N or 12N27. I don't know, one of the Sandvik steels, but... Uh, Blade HQ saying it's rocking 8CR13 MOV, which is probably right, uh, especially for the price point. And it's pretty standard for uh, Kershaw budget line knives. Uh, the handle material is FRN um, or GFN, glass filled nylon. Uh, and it has kind of like a cool little uh, t design. Doesn't add a tremendous amount of texture or grip, but, you know, it's enough uh, to add a little bit. Uh, it is a designated flipper with the Kershaw Speed Safe. Uh, there are no thumb studs or any other opening mechanisms. Uh, and it snaps out efficient. It's running on nylon washers, so nothing special. Um, ergos, it reminds me a lot of, you know, the uh, Camber or those other Blade HQ exclusive ones. I forgot what they were now. I've done reviews on them, so I might link those up there. Uh, you know, it's kind of their curved utilitarian handle. Uh, it works well. It's comfortable enough. You do get a four-finger grip, so pretty sweet. One good thing with this knife for the budget is the pocket clip. It is a deep carry pocket clip, um, and it's all blacked out, so you don't have any lettering on there, so it keeps it pretty inconspicuous, and it kind of goes with the overall theme of the knife. It's just a blacked out. Uh, everyday carry utility knife, uh, which I like. Uh, I do like, too, the uh, sharpening choil there. It gives you plenty of uh, depth and space to um, sharpen this. And it is a hollow saber grind. 
So pretty cool. It is a liner lock. It does have flow through construction. There's no lanyard hole or designated lanyard pillar, but I'm sure you could work one in there if you need to. Um, so it should be easy to clean. And, you know, it's just a no fuss, simple, plain edge work knife. So let's compare it to some other knives real quick. We have the uh, Tough Flight, Cold Steel Tough Flight. We're going to throw in Benchmade Mini Grip uh, 556-1, I believe. Uh, we'll throw in the Spetterco Alcyon, and that should be enough. Uh, so as you can see, it fits into that kind of general EDC realm of 3-inch blade, 4-inch handle. Uh, pretty standard. It's basically what I like for an EDC. Um, and it fits in with most uh, urban EDC carry laws restrictions for majority of the cities in the United States. Um, but I can't be specific to all of those. Uh, but on that, you know, it fits within my realm for what I like to carry. Um, you know, obviously the tough light's a little shorter, shorter blade, shorter handle, but uh, really good comparison to the mini grip and the Elcyon for that part. So comparing the size, we got, um, I'll give the mini grip a little bit thicker in the blade stock, just slightly. Uh, handle though is thicker on the flock. Uh, tough light, tough light blade stock is thicker. Handle wise, about the same. And then the Elcyon, Elcyon blade stock slightly thicker. Handle is thicker on the flock. So there you have that. Other than that, we got the ugly brown glove test. Yes. Uh, so texture-wise, you know, that design and motif on the handle scales actually works enough to give me grip. It is kind of a matted texture anyways. Um, and then the flipper, there is no jimping on the flipper, so the flipper is kind of slick. But it protrudes out enough that I can press into it and deploy it. Uh, lock up, you know, in this situation with a gloved hand like this, I wish there was some jimping because it is very slick up top. Uh, but the flipper acts as a finger guard and the contouring and angle of the handle does kind of help it hold in hand plus the texturing once again uh, so it actually holds in better than I'd expect but it could be better uh, disengaging the locks a little bit awkward and because the thickness of the spine is so thin it doesn't give me a, a really good place and it's kind of rounded so my finger tends to kind of slip when I'm closing it but it's still doable. It's just a little awkward. So I don't know. Does it pass? Yes, it passes the ugly brown glove test. What would I give it? Eh, I'd give it a C minus. I'd give it a C minus on the ugly brown glove test. All right, guys. So there you have it. This is the Kershaw Flock. Uh, definitely a budget EDC. Uh, for $25, it's kind of pushing the price, especially for, like, the fit and finish. It just doesn't feel, you know, as quality as you'd want. I mean, because you can get much better knives uh, with the same materials but just done better uh, for a cheaper price. So, I don't know. if I'd say not $25, but if you can find it for $20 or under, uh, I'd definitely go with it uh, as an option. Um, it would fit that price range a little bit better, but putting it up to $25 is $5 more than I would, should have paid for it. So there you have it, guys. This is the Kershaw Flock. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Share. Uh, check out these other videos. Click on my button. Subscribe. Uh, thank you so much. Leave comments and questions down below. Thank you, and I'll see you outside.